What's up guys, my name's Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. This week was brutal for me because I finally caught COVID after evading it for two years. But thankfully, it was a very boring week in the world of Apple software updates, so I didn't miss too much. But regardless, we still have some new iOS 16 changes to show you guys in the latest beta 4 release, along with an update on the performance, battery life, and of course, what to expect next. We're also going to be discussing why iPadOS 16 got delayed, why the iPhone 14 is not going to cost as much as we thought, a redesign coming to the entry-level iPad, how a teen got electrocuted from her phone charger, and more. And as always, if you guys want to stay updated with all things Apple, make sure to click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss next week's episode. All right, so as usual, let's start off with even more iOS 16 features and changes. And the first one comes in the messages application. So now if you're in a group chat and you want to tag somebody, if you type in the at sign and then start to type out their name, you will see that we now have a contact photo next to the person's name in our predictive text section right here. Before it just showed the name, now it shows the contact photo along with the name. Also, if you wanted to record an audio message, but you already started typing something right there. So if you tap on the audio message button right here, you will see we get a new error prompt that says to record an audio message, clear the typed text. So that was not there prior to beta four. In Safari on beta four, you could see that we no longer have the start page text up top. For whatever reason, Apple removed that. This is beta three on the left, beta four on the right. So also when we go into the tab section right here, so if we go to our tabs and then scroll up, you can see we have three tabs. It says three tabs right there on beta three, but for whatever reason on beta four, that has been removed. It does not show the three tabs up there. Also in beta four, we now get a new option when we select some text. So for example, I selected something here on both beta three and beta four, and on beta three, we do not get this option, but on beta four, we have the option to find selection. So if we select a word or a phrase or a whole sentence, we could find that selection on that web page. So that's quicker than going into the share sheet and doing it the old fashioned way where we go down here to find on page. Also in beta four, we get a new prompt that tells us we cannot delete this lock screen because it says you need a default lock screen that's not linked to a focus. To delete this one, create a new lock screen. So that prompt is new right there. And the reason for that is because my other two lock screens, as you can see, are tied to focus modes. So if I were to take this one off right here and then try to delete it, I would be able to because of that. Also new in beta four is this prompt up top that says unlock to edit. So that appears, of course, if you try to edit your lock screen or change the lock screen without having unlocked your device. Now, if we head down to our hidden and recently deleted folders right here, if we tap on them and I'm not going to unlock, but you will see we have some different verbiage right here. So we can go to recently deleted and you can see beta three on the left, beta four on the right, just a slight change right there. So it used to say this album requires face ID. Now it says use face ID to view this album. And then it says view album now instead of show album. On beta three. Now throughout using beta four, I started to notice a few things related to Siri suggestions that I had not seen previously. Maybe it was there in beta three, but I didn't really start noticing it until recently. And that is that we get two different sections of Siri suggestions now. So before I know in iOS 15, it only showed one, but now we have two sections for that. And we also have, you know, Siri suggestions based on what you're doing. So if you're listening to music, it would show like more from this artist right there. Or if you're in a phone call, as you can see right here, it shows ongoing call and under ongoing call, it shows the contact that you're currently on the phone with. And if you have two different, you know, iterations of their contact in your phone, like a duplicate, it will show both of them right there. And then even below that, we have two more Siri suggestions. So they're definitely getting more sophisticated with Siri suggestions here in iOS 16, and I'm really liking it. Now, another important change in beta four is not really a change, but it's a bug fix. And that is that the music application is no longer crashing. So for whatever reason on beta one through three, it just crashed a ton. But now on beta four, the music application has not crashed once in two weeks. Now, a Twitter user also shared this video right here of the live activities API actually working on 
his lock screen. So you can see all it does is just a simple counter, but it does give us an idea as to what this might look like. So of course, we're not going to see this for a while. Of course, applications are going to have to implement it into their application, the API into their application. And Apple said that we're not going to see live activities like fully roll out until after iOS 16 releases to the public. But for now, that's a little preview of what it might look like. And speaking of previews, we also have a preview of the upcoming always on display. So this was leaked in Xcode 14 beta four in the simulator. And Steve Moser posted this on Twitter. And we also have other people posting this on Twitter as well. It's been all over the place, but you could see this is what it might look like when the iPhone 14 gets released. So pretty much all rumors are pointing to an always on display coming this year. And we finally have some proof of it in Xcode's simulator. Now, if you're into MLB baseball and if you've been following the Friday night baseball here in the TV application, Apple and the MLB did just announce their September Friday night baseball double header schedule. So now you'll be able to watch two games instead of one every Friday night for free. All right, so now let's move on to some iOS 16 beta four bugs because the battery life obviously got much better in beta four. The performance got much better, but there are still quite a few bugs, actually a lot more than I initially realized. I think really more than anybody initially realized. So the thing I've been dealing with a lot, number one is YouTube crashing. So for whatever reason, when I go into YouTube and I go into full screen and then I swipe down to bring it out of full screen into the regular view, it crashes the app like nine times out of 10. So I'm having lots of issues with YouTube crashing. That of course could be YouTube's fault, but I only noticed it here in beta four. Another very common bug is the volume slider being very laggy. So you can see right here, if you take a look at the volume slider, it's just a little bit choppy. It's not a huge deal, but it is choppy right there. I never use this personally. That's why I never noticed it. I just use it with my volume, you know, buttons. I just press the buttons right there. And maybe there is like a millisecond to a second delay, nothing major, but some people are seeing that in the control center as well. So you can see if you move it quickly, there is a little bit of lag right there. So that is a bug as well in beta four. Another thing I've noticed in beta four, especially when it comes to phone calls and FaceTime calls is that boxes are transparent when they shouldn't be. So you can see right here, I'm on a FaceTime call with my dad and you can see up top, there's supposed to be like a black box around that, but for whatever reason, it's bugged and it's transparent. It looks good kind of from here, but when you're in the actual call, it just looks very bugged out and like it doesn't belong. And then also if I get a phone call and I pull down on it, it's just a lot of transparency. It's just a very big UI bug. Every time I pull down the screen from the little mini player right there, when I have a phone call coming in while my phone is unlocked. So transparency issues are definitely there on beta four as well. I also had this issue in both beta beta three and beta four, but it's reactions in the messages application just being completely out of whack, just like way off of where they're supposed to be. So this happens mostly in group chats. I've noticed. I've also noticed that tap to wake is very laggy and just doesn't always work here in beta four. So like I'll tap my phone to wake it up and it doesn't wake up. It takes like two or three seconds before it wakes up. Or sometimes I just have to press it like a second or a third time. But aside from those UI bugs and YouTube crashing, things have been great. I mean, this is definitely a solid improvement over the previous betas in my opinion. Now people are going to say, oh, it's more buggy than any previous version, but yes, we have bugs that's expected, but the overall raw performance is definitely better than betas one through three. I mean, things are not crashing near as often, you know, the music application, I remember photos crashed a lot, Safari crashed a lot. A lot of applications crashed a ton on betas one through three, but on beta four, no apps are crashing for me except for YouTube, a third party application, which is nice to see. And then overall, just raw performance, like I said, especially when it comes to changing wallpapers on the lock screen, everything is just more fast and fluid than it was previously. Of course, it's not perfect. It's not near iOS 15 level yet. We're still early on in the beta stages, but it is a nice improvement over the previous betas. And of course, we do still have more room to go. I'm hoping that the next beta and of course, beta six will improve even more on those UI bugs and those crashes. And I know a lot of people are really irritated about the volume bug right here, where it's just kind of lagging and glitchy, which I'm sure that'll be fixed in the next beta. And then when it comes to the battery life, battery life is definitely better than it was in beta three. I talked about this in my initial what's new video. I was able to detect that this battery life was going to be better just from that video alone. And it was right. My intuition was right on that. Battery life is definitely better here on this fourth beta than it was on previous builds. 
by a pretty good margin. And of course, it's still not perfect. Like I said, with the performance, it's not near iOS 15 level yet, but it is definitely not draining overnight like it was before. It's not heating up as much as it was before. The music application is not taking up a ton of battery like it was before. So battery life, definitely an improvement. And I'm expecting that to get even better as we go on. All right, so now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next up is going to be iOS 16 beta 5. So that is going to be coming next week. So of course, we did not get any new software this week aside from a studio display firmware update. So no iOS 16 software this week, which means we were on a two week cycle like I originally predicted. And that means that we should see beta five next week. So we could see it any day from the eighth through the 10th. Of course, the ninth and the 10th are the most likely because Apple does like to release those software updates on Tuesday or Wednesday. So be on the lookout for that on the 9th or the 10th. Now we could also see a 15.7 beta one next week, although it's kind of hard to tell right now. We could also get a 15.6.1. It's really hard to tell what Apple is going to do, but I would expect one of those two, of course, before the end of August. And then as for the final release of iOS 16, that is going to be coming in September. My guess is going to be on September 19th or September 20th. One of those two days is when we should see iOS 16 released to everybody. And of course, later that week should be the release of the iPhone 14. And then iPad OS 16 and Mac OS Ventura will be coming in October. And I'll explain why iPad OS 16 got delayed here in a moment. All right, so now let's move on to the latest Apple news. And let's start with that surprising news that iPad OS 16 is set to be delayed by about a month due to complaints of the new stage manager feature. So according to a report from Bloomberg, the delay of the software is due at least in part to an ambitious effort to overhaul iPad's multitasking capabilities, which of course is stage manager. During beta testing, the system has drawn criticism from some developers and users for its bugs, a confusing interface, and lack of compatibility with most iPads. Staggering the release schedule will allow Apple to put more engineering resources into completing iOS 16. The change also would bring the iPad OS 16 release closer to the launch of the new iPad hardware. The company is planning an updated iPad Pro with an M2 chip, along with a faster entry-level iPad with a USB-C port. So now it looks like iPad OS 16 and Mac OS Ventura will be released in October. So I will be curious to see if there's a change in beta release frequency now, or just the amount of betas that we're gonna get for those operating systems from now until then. Now moving on to some new iPhone 14 news. So as we've known for a while now, the iPhone 14 is set to have the same a15 bionic chip as the iphone 13 series had and while a lot of people were pretty concerned that this was going to lead to no major performance improvements leaker shrimp apple pro claims that these standard iphone 14 models will in fact have better performance than the iphone 13. he mentions that the performance improvements are going to happen due to the new cellular modem a new internal design and other minor changes and also the additional two gigabytes of ram for a total of six is expected to you know play a role in improving the overall performance on that next iphone and as far as the price of the iphone 14 goes if you remember a couple months back we saw reports that the price of the iphone might increase this year and a lot of people were already starting to get upset since not only were we going to see a price increase but we were going to get the same chipset as in the previous generation it was not going to be a good look for apple in the consumer's eyes but that may not be the case any longer so according to a post on Korean blog Naver, the iPhone 14 will be starting at the same $799, despite all of the supply chain issues and, of course, inflation. So the post mentions that this was a decision made at the top executive level by saying Apple considered the stagnation of the global mobile phone market and declining demand. And by the way, the original source of this rumor is apparently from an unnamed major U.S. financial institution with a track record for accuracy. So hopefully this one turns out to be true because I don't think anyone's going to be happy to see the next iPhone start at anything higher than $800. I mean, Apple needs to save that price increase for like their next major redesign, not 
the iPhone 14. And then last thing we're gonna talk about with the iPhone 14, let's talk about the colors. So according to a Twitter leaker, the iPhone 14 will come in green, purple, blue, black, white, and red. So pink is going to be replaced this year, apparently with purple. And for the Pro and Pro Max models, we're gonna have green, purple again, silver, gold, and graphite. So purple is going to take the place of Sierra Blue. And I must say, as a big fan of purple, I hope these rumors are true. I really love purple iPhones. I think it looked great the previous times Apple has done it. All right, so now let's shift over to the iPad, more specifically the entry-level iPad, because it's finally set to get a nice new redesign. So this is according to MySmartPrice, who obtained CAD renders that were allegedly sent to a case company in preparation for this product. Now these renders show pretty much everything. So we see a bigger display, flat edges like the higher-end iPads, a rear camera bump, the removal of the headphone jack, and a USB-C port. Now this iPad is however expected to keep that Touch ID home button which would make it the only iPad left with that functionality as the rest either have Touch ID built into the power button or Face ID and no touch button at all. So that means that we're still going to have those thicker bezels you know much thicker than any other iPad but that is kind of expected for a cheap entry-level tablets. And this iPad is also expected to have the A14 chip inside. So we should be seeing this iPad sometime in the coming months. Now we also have an update on the Apple Watch Series 8. So according to Shrimp Apple Pro on Twitter, we're unfortunately not going to see a design change from the Series 7. So the Series 8, the base model is going to have the same design as the Series 7, and it looks like we're not gonna have any new sensors either. So keep in mind, this is just for the base model Series 8. If we're gonna get new sensors, it's probably gonna be on the Pro version or another version of the Series 8 watch, not the base model. Now we're also hearing that the base model is not going to have the titanium finish anymore. It's just gonna be aluminum and stainless steel. And he also mentions that mass production is in late August, which means there's no delay for the Apple Watch, at least the base model. And then finally, you guys know how we do in the final news story. We have to share something interesting or just crazy. And this time, unfortunately, it's crazy. And I say this because a 17-year-old in Cambodia was electrocuted and killed in her sleep by her phone charger. So according to the report, the teenager was found dead in her home, lying on top of her phone after taking a shower on July 27th. Local officials determined that she had died instantly from a massive shock in her sleep. So let this be a warning to you and especially your children if you have them. Do not touch anything plugged into a wall while you are wet. I mean, especially your phone, since it is something you probably don't think about, you know, before you do. Just don't touch anything plugged into a wall when you're wet after a shower at the pool, anything crazy. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is the latest batch of Apple news from this past week, along with some additional features and changes found in iOS 16 beta 4 and public beta 2. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for a lot more Apple Weekly episodes just like this one. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.